Hello, so this is the final result of the tutorial here and this is the model we're going to be working with to turn it into the low poly which we'll bake the textures down onto. This tutorial will include retopologization and baking with Marmoset Toolbag. So let's get into retopology. It's going to be much easier than you might think. This is a non-destructive model and we're going to turn it into one low poly piece. This model was created using booleans and bevels. So I'm going to go through the manual retopology technique using a plane. First things first, we want to turn off the bevels on every part of the model. This is pretty easy. We can just go on it and using the hard ops, we can move from the Q menu, go to bevel and just change the distance to be nothing. I have a model a modifier on here, the uh, weighted normal. I'm just going to turn that one off just so I have nice flat shading. I can now see the model tool, nice and simply. The next step, I need to make sure up here, the snap to is set to vertex. Once that's set up, we're ready to get started on retopology. I'm just going to add a plane and drag it forwards a little bit and head into edit mode. All I need to do now is just delete off three of the other vertices. Grab my vertex here and hold, press G and hold control to begin snapping. And I want to snap it to one of the corners of the model. Next, I want to build out these whole faces as they are on the lower poly. So I can do that just by extruding and then holding control to snap it to the vertices. And I follow around the big shapes, creating end guns, which we'll triangulate later. This then lets me skip over the things. So you can see I've created these shapes here. So you need to select the whole loop with the Alt click and then fill it in. You can see we've already covered a bit of probably five or so percent of the model. And we can just go through the whole thing following this. Now the model is of course symmetrical, so I'm only going to go across half the model. For corners like these, it's completely acceptable to create tries. Um, as long as you keep your end guns planner, that's also totally fine. There's a lot of, I think, I want to say confusion about when it's acceptable to create end guns and just keep them planner and make sure they're on a hard surface mesh and your end guns are perfectly fine. Now, one next thing I want to address, which I've actually just gone over a bit too quickly here, but I'm going to come back to it. As you see, we have a pretty large resolution bevel here. Now, this is a bit too high for a uh, bake and for a game mesh. So because it's on a surface that kind of faces the player, uh, they're not going to see it too much. So I've dropped that into a three resolution. Now, what you want to do is for spheres and things that protrude out of a mesh, you want to use quite a lot of resolution. But for things like this, you don't need to use too much resolution at all and you can just drop them down pretty low and the curve that we'll get from the bake will just look really clean on about three or so verts for that uh, surface. Aside from that you can just continue as normal. Um, think about silhouettes I guess is what I would say when you're doing these parts. I'm using the F2 add-on to quickly create faces. I say that's practically a part of Blender that should be enabled by default but it's not. But it is shipped with Blender by default. So you can just turn it on in the add-ons menu. I'm sure I don't need to tutorialize you on how to do that. You can definitely figure it out by yourself. And if you can't, I'm sure Google has the answer for you. So as you can see, we are going, oops, I just cut a box there. Uh, as you can see, we are going through manually, but it's pretty simple and quick to use this method to create the retopology, which, you know, takes a lot of the stress and pain out of it. I think, of all things, there's stigma around 3D modeling. I don't know if stigma is the right word, but people like to complain about certain things, and one of the things is definitely retopology. But, you know, an essential step, get some music on, chill out a bit. You're just pushing the faces around. It's pretty chill. Look how much we've already done. I mean, it can't be that bad, right? Especially hard surface stuff like this. It's just kind of relaxing. Just kind of having a good time. Covering up the faces, rebuilding the mesh we made. Sure, it's a bit of a different ball game with organic stuff, but you can handle it. Just takes time and a little patience. It's kind of like a fun puzzle, right? My next thing I'd say is, you know, um, 
you will kind of gain a feeling for what is correct on retopology. You'll certain, like, certainly find out quite quickly what shades the best, what doesn't. Uh, if these loops don't select properly using alt, collect, uh, alt click, then just control click around them to get the whole loop. So, oh yeah, that's something else we'll cover in this. I completely forgot to mention, we'll be covering the UV creation process, and how easy I promise it will be for you. So, I don't want to create that there. I do not need any quads on this, it's a hard surface mess, so I can just do it the easy way. Create massive end guns. <coughs> You need to have accidentally left the bevel on, not on this part here, but it's okay because that'll be completely baked in. Anything totally flat to a surface, like these edges here, you really don't need to worry about on the baking. Um, because they will just get completely absorbed into the bake and look absolutely fine as if they were not even baked at all. And they were really there on the surface from only a normal map. So I guess if you're new to it, and I probably go into things a bit too quickly, what baking essentially does is you create from a uh, from a normal map, which is you know a way of kind of controlling the way a model lights. You take the details from your high poly mesh, which is the more detailed version I have here with all the bevels on it. Oh, sorry, come on, hide. There you go. This more detailed edition, and then you create a normal map that matches over the UVs of the lower one to essentially bake it all out. Uh, you bake it, I don't like all baking, but you bake the high poly onto the low poly and then the normal map simulates lighting to make it look as if there is no um, real difference between the meshes. But in terms of performance reasons for video game, the difference is huge. So, we're actually pretty much finished. I'm just going to mirror this guy with an alt X from the quick card ops mirror. And that's the retopology complete. Uh, it would be kind of potentially beneficial to mirror these like vents, sorry, um, re-topologize these vents onto the low poly, but in the interest of showing how powerful normal maps can be, I'm not going to bother, and we're just going to see how much we can flatten them down on normal map. I think we will have better results than you might think. Unless you're a normal map enthusiast who's passionate about the results, and maybe you maybe you think you'll have better results than even me. But I don't have any good results, we can't bring his face up to here. So essentially, you want to recreate it. And you see all this Z fighting we have here? Um, this is something you'd usually be concerned about, but Z fighting between the low poly and the high poly is totally fine. Um, you don't need to like scale air or anything, or have any difference. You can really just have them totally inside each other. So another thing to note is, you see here, I didn't bother including this little bit, this little guy here, in the retopology, because details that go in crunch down very well. Details that pop out the mesh, because they have a silhouette the player should see, can be not as good, but the details that squeeze into the mesh are often baking very well. So, let's finish the preparation of this mesh, and we'll call it, it's important to name things, so we'll call it Vent1, and then underscore low, which is a great name for it. So, and then we can apply the mirror modifier, just delete that little piece that goes down the middle, we don't need it. Next magical step, we want to triangulate the mesh, but we don't need to triangulate quads. That's what we're doing, but we do need to triangulate the end gun. So this can be achieved very easily by just adding a triangulate modifier and then changing the minimum vertices up to five. So you see it's actually triangulated quite a lot of what we did because we had a lot of end guns. So the next step here, we need to ensure that the shading is correct. Now, the shading should be done per UV island. Basically, what you want to do is you want the sharp edges, so I've just marked sharp by default and we've actually got a pretty good thing looking, a pretty good looking thing going on here. And we want to mark sharp per edges. Oh, yeah, that's not right. <laughs> Let's clean that up. Seems I've uh, messed up the end gone here. And uh, boy, it's filling in. I'm sure you won't make that mistake, but it's a quick fix. Just mirror again, apply it, clean this up. Triangulate the end guns, and all is well on the mesh. So, basically, we want to mark the same things sharp as we do mark seams. So, what we're going to do is 
just gonna bring these guys up here and I'll just triangulate that a little bit nicer. There you go. So I've made a mistake. <laughs> See if I can just clean this up, unmess up my mistake. There you go. From here to here, drop this loop. What I did was I just constructed the topology wrong, basically. Something you may do. Uh, a little embarrassing to include in the tutorial, but everyone makes mistakes. Here, I'll mirror that across again. Apply it again, and there we go. We can see the mesh now is perfect. So essentially, back to what I was saying before, we want the sharp edges, and the UV seems to be the same. So I'm just going to select one of the sharp edges, do Shift G, select similar, sharpness, and then Control E, mark seam. Now, there's a few little exceptions, so what we want to do is, we want probably this part here. We just leave that on one island, so let's just clear these sharps, but also clear the seams. Same story on this side, I don't want to mirror it too much at this point, because it'll create a... Uh, it'll create a... Another line down the middle. Don't want that. <coughs> so here as well, I can probably just clear these sharps away. And clear the seams. And that'll give you the best like uh, results on the model map. So, keep those two things consistent. Now, let's jump over to the UV editing tab. And just do a simple unwrap. Now, the unwrap for hard surface stuff, generally speaking, conformal will give you the best results. Angle based is prone to giving you a little bit of warping. Mm, not really visible in this version, but conformal does seem to be giving me better results anyway. And all we want to do now is just pack the things. I use the shot packer add-on. I'll include the link in the description. It's pretty good. It's pretty cheap as all. Well. Uh, but you can also, of course, always use the UV pack islands. Now it's important you leave a little bit of space in between the islands because textures will leak onto each other. So leave uh, 0 0.1, I think, or 2. Essentially, you need it to be like about 8 pixels of space on a 1k texture map. So 0.15 is probably more than enough space. I like Shot Packer because the packer packs things inside other things. And as well as that, you can type in an exact amount of space. I think it's like $15 or something. Uh, and it just gets the job done really well. I mean, look how clean these UV tiles are. Perfect. There are other solutions like UV Pack Master, but this is my personal favourite. So, I mean, that's it. Low poly done. Wasn't that easy? Retopology was clean. UVs were super simple because all the sharp edges are all of our hard edges and rarely do you need to intervene at all. Um, so, it's practically automatic to do the UVs. All we need to do now is prepare the high poly. So, I'm going to put the thing here into a folder. A new collection, low. That makes me typed in Russia. Low. There we go. And then I'm just going to hide that one away for now. Uh, the high poly mesh we have here. Uh, bring back our bevels. Lovely. Get the bevels in there, a little too big, maximum. Probably do the same to these guys around the back. It's kind of looking as it was at the beginning now, before I uh, adjusted it. Turn the weighted normal modifier on again, just to clean up any little areas of dodgy shading I may have had before. You can see this, this face, face has like these lines coming along it. Because there's an end gone and a boolean, but control shift Z, bam, solid. Uh, good story all along here. Check this guy out, needs his weird normal turned on. This guy just needs weird normal. Yeah, you're alright. And then one thing we want to do is just add a triangulate modifier with the hard ops menu to triangulate all of the end gons because Marmoset Toolbag cannot handle end gons and just make sure you're. Uh, your modifier for weight of normal goes after the triangulate to make sure that the face shading is perfect. There we go, that's that done. And once that is done, your model is ready for export, so just go to File, Export, and you want to use the FBX because essentially it's just the best uh, file format. Uh, unfortunately, when I'm recording, you won't be able to see the window. Just click Selected Objects on the right, you'll see it. Can't miss it. Little checkbox. Uh, locate a file to export this to, and name it something like um, Vent, or whatever your model is, Vent1 High. So we export the high poly mesh by selecting all that. 
Hide the folder you're keeping your high poly details in. Show your low poly ones. Get the low poly. File, export, FBX same story. Give it the same name, but call it underscore low. And then export it. And I'll see you in Marmoset Toolbag. And we're here in Marmoset Toolbag. So all you need to do is open up a file browser window. And uh, you'll be able to see mine, but you'll see the results. Select your high poly and your low poly model. And drag and drop them into the section here on the left. And then you'll have both your high poly and your low poly model in Marmoset Toolbag ready to go. So to bake the high poly onto the low poly, all you need to do is create a bake project up here. You can do that by clicking the nice fresh loaf of bread. And you see you have bake project one and the first bake group. Now we're only going to use one bake group in this tutorial. So we can just drop the high poly model into the high section in the hierarchy just by dragging and dropping. And the low poly into the low poly. And I'm sure you could predict that. Now on the bake project one, we need to set an output directory. So pick that and then just navigate to a directory of your choice. A file browser will pop up. Unfortunately, I'm unable to record it. And once you've found that, just name your bake. So name it uh, vent1 underscore bake. Uh, actually, I'll name it underscore bake itself automatically. So just name it after your project descriptively in the folder you've prepared for your baked texture maps. And you'll see then it goes here. So if you, yeah, we don't have multiple text sets on this tutorial, but in the future we'll probably be looking at that. We can choose the resolution here. It's good to start with just a 1K bake for a little preview. Now we need to configure the texture maps. Now these are the correct texture maps set up to be used with uh, Substance Painter minus height. So if you're going to use sub, Hey, so it's me from the future here, cutting in to make a little uh, thing to say about this. On your bake project, if you're going to be using it for games, you need to render the normal maps with a DirectX format. So click on the normals down here, make sure you go to that, and then make sure flip Y is ticked. Very important you tick flip Y, otherwise you will not get the normal map in DirectX format. Substance Painter, and I imagine you probably are if you're going to work for games. What you need to do is you go to configure, and in here, make sure you have, you don't need height, and the position is best to bake in Substance Painter, but you need normal, normals object, curvature, thickness, and ambient occlusion, as well as material ID if you're going to use that. Now, everything else pretty much comes good by standard. So you've got all these guys set up down here to bake. You can just click the bake button and it'll process often very quickly. That's it, already done. It's an impressive piece of software. And then you can click the little P for preview. And look at that. I mean, that is a really clean bake, right? You can hardly even tell that there isn't a real bevel on the edges. So what we're going to do now is we're going to use the fantastic anti-skewing system. And you can see as well here in this vent, the power of the the bake normal maps. I mean, catch the right angle, see the bottom, and you can tell it's not real. But, I mean, that's some pretty good stuff, right? I'm certainly not complaining. So anyway, let's use the anti-skew tool to correct some of the skewing we have here on the mesh. If you click on the low poly mesh here, you'll see you the button to paint skew. Click on that. A little map will appear in front of you. Just move that out of the way. And once you have moved that out of the way, head in and just paint over all the objects you'll skew. And you'll see what this is, is the normal direction of the bake will be correcting itself. Uh, and you'll get a red area where you painted. Essentially, paint over all of the surface details on flat uh, surfaces. And just have a good time with it. And you can see it'll correct in real time and you can see what looks the best. You can do a control click to remove the um, adjustments you've made if it makes the bake look worse. And you can just leave it out otherwise if it does not. Some of the artifacts will disappear when you do it. It's a particularly bad warping issue here, so I'm going to paint over that one. And it automatically corrects it and gives me a better look at what's going on. So the store here. And this line down the middle here is a bit weird, so I'm just going to do that. And that actually helps it quite a lot. I don't believe there's a way of mirroring this, unfortunately, so you have to go over to both sides. Uh, obviously, I guess it's just not designed for symmetrical stuff. Only a couple more left to go. It's looking as good as possible. Try not to paint skew adjustments over edges. If you do, there's a good chance the baking on those edges will suffer and not look as good as it could. Once you've finished, painting over all the little details you need to adjust. Actually, that, that was fine. Click on the bake project again. Let's up it to the full resolution for the bake this time. And just click bake. It'll chug away. It'll take a little bit longer at a full resolution bake. 
but it's still remarkably fast. Um, I was flabbergasted the first time I used this instead of Substance Painter. I mean, I was really, really impressed. And I actually think that's it done. It's sort of hard to notice the difference in some places, but you can see here, if you compare that to the original, this is so much cleaner, so much less skewed. And all of our baked texture maps exist at this output directory. So, let's get our model and our baked textures into Substance Painter. We just go to the File, New, and then select our file project here. Grab the vent. Make sure, I mean, I saved it on my desktop, pretty shameful I know. But I imagine you, you're a better person than me. You've got a lovely project folder for this, don't you? So set your document resolution to 4K and we'll downscale later. Although if your system has any problems running that, don't be afraid to use 2, 1K or whatever is necessary. Select your template to match where you want to work in in the end. I'm going to choose Unreal Engine 4 uh, because it's quite a fluid template. I can even export to Unity via that because it just uses all the PBR maps and a transparency channel. Uh, let's jump down back up to 4K. And then the baked mesh normal maps here. We want to click add on here and then just select all of our maps from earlier on. Again, on my desktop, I know, bad behavior. Uh, we don't want to import cameras, so if there's any FBX, they'll get a shot of them. And just click OK. So, this is our model, but I'm sure you can recognize no text on here. So, you need to find the texture set settings. It'll be either down here, or you can have it closed away in a tab on the right hand side. Customizable UI is pretty nice, and you can do it in this software. So, just select your normal map for that one. They'll be labeled by the name of the bake and then underscore whatever kind of map they are. The world space normal, the ID map, the ambient occlusion, the curvature, and the thickness. Now suddenly you'll notice this looks a lot more like what we what we want to see, right? But to the same extent, it is very high performance because if I turn on the wireframe, you can see it's that topology we created earlier on in Blender, very low poly. So you're all ready to texture, and I'm just gonna use some smart materials to quickly texture this. But if you wanna do a really good texturing job, I encourage you to create your own smart materials. Get some nice uh, reference material, and then uh, you'll be good to go by just carefully recreating that reference material to look really good. But I'm just gonna use some once I bought a file station. <laughs> because I am lazy and not a very good texture artist. Actually, working off a uh, smart material you find or buy can actually be a really good way to start uh, and get an idea for things. Just trying to pick one here, I think matches it. Hey, you know what? That's not bad. What I like to see is, I think I'd like to add some like dirt coming up from the ground. I imagine it's kind of like a, a dirty vent in some like cyberpunk alleyway. So. I've got that mail there, I'm going to add a fill layer, and I'll use one of the smart masks already, which should have a dirt ground material as it does. Ah, but we've encountered an issue, that's not coming up from the ground, and this is because we haven't actually baked one of the maps, so enter the baked maps menu, we want to use the low poly mesh as high poly mesh, and the, mesh we need, the map we need to bake is the position map, Marmoset Toolbag does not bake position maps at the right scale for Substance Painter. So you want to bake it in here at 4K and just click Bake Selected Textures. There we go. That was quite easy. And now things are drooping correctly off areas and we've got some good dirt going on. Perfect. Anyway, I can just make this a... Uh, I mean, it's totally rough. It's not metallic. It's quite dark in colour. We kind of brown, grime. Go down a little bit. There you go, a little bit of brown dirt on there, doesn't hurt too much. And quite frankly, for an environment prop, I probably wouldn't go much more overboard than this. I can export the textures to the game engine and everything's ready. So that's how to prepare a game asset from a hard ops model. Um, jobs are good. Best of luck with your project.